Hey y'all. Now, mind you, I ain't complaining about the heat, but I just want to mention this. You know, when the weather gets warmer, I see so many people, and I was guilty of it in my younger years, wear cotton t-shirts. I think they got uh, poly whatever on in them too. Those suckers are hot. I, I know, I've got a bunch of them, I still wear them. This shirt here, 100% cotton, thin, it breathes real easy, a lot cooler weather. And no, look again, I still, I don't, I don't have my rompers on again today. Just too hot, that extra bibbing over me. I, I like the, I like the bibs, but, uh, man, they get too warm. I like, I like these cotton shirts that breathe pretty easy when it gets hot on out. Now, mind you, it's not hot here today. It's, it's only 90 degrees, and, and to me it may be hot, but I, I'm saying it's, it's not really hot because, uh, I have lived in Claiborne, Texas, Redding, California, um, Spring Hill, Louisiana, Taylor, Arkansas. You know, I mean, I, 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 I know what that humidity is in the deep south. Um, I know what the dry heat is. I mean, it's, it, yeah, no, we, we ain't got nothing like that. So, hey, you know what? That's why they, that's why they call Oregon here. They call this God's country because we got a lot better climate than y'all. But, uh, anyway, the purpose of this video, I had a question of, you know, what do I do, how did I get here, and everything else, and I just thought I'd tell that little story, a little bit of it, part of it. Several years ago, back in the mid-70s, a really good friend of mine, he was... He was an older man. I'm not going to give his name, his last name. His first name was Bert. No, that was his wife's name. His name was Joe. Like I said, it's been many years ago. So Joe, he was he was a veteran, and he had bought a really nice house in the mid, you know, for, nice for those times. Really nice, comfortable 1,700 square foot house. Um, Three bedroom, huge backyard, lots of garden space for it. He lived it right in town, but I mean it was a huge lot, a really nice house, everything. And in the mid 70s, I, re I did rent apartments for a short time, and I was paying $105 a month for a two bedroom apartment, a little tiny dinky two bedroom apartment in the mid 70s. Same same city, Salem, Oregon. He had the payments of a hundred and about a hundred dollars a month. I don't remember exactly, but it was right around a hundred dollars. It was actually a little less for his place. He had the payments on it, and he told me he says, "He's look. He says rent will always go up, house payments will always go up, the, the cost of land and everything. But if you buy a place, whatever it is, you buy a place that you can afford, that you can afford the payments for. You might think it's steep now." But 20 years down the road from now, those prices when you thought you, you know you thought they were going to be steep, well, you're going to be making more income. You know you'll be able to afford it. And, and I always remembered that. And uh, so when I bought this place, um, I bought it in 1991. I think it was 1991. I kept that in mind that uh, first of all I got to make sure that I can afford the place and I also remember back then the uh, the recession that we had during you know the Jimmy Carter recession where uh, the economy really collapsed I mean it, it, we, we had a big class I mean construction took a huge dive and people were really struggling for work and I had I had to hunt you know I kept busy through those years but I had to work hard, you know, I had to look hard to find the jobs, but I was able to carry my way through. But I remember those years, and I knew that that recession would happen again, and I wanted to make sure that when that recession happens again, that I'll still be able to somehow swing the property payment if I have not paid this place off. Well, I paid the place off about... Oh, I'm thinking six, seven, eight years ago. It's, it's been paid off for a little while, maybe even longer than that.
but my mindset was where I was at, you know, that, that I knew that you know, I couldn't keep up with the Jones. I wasn't going to get into a place and, 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 and get myself into debt, have this super fabulous deal. I, I knew that hard times would come again. And you know what? Hard times, harder times are coming again. Keep that in mind. So if you're, you're getting ready to go out and buy something, keep that in mind. If the economy collapses and you have to go on out, I don't care if you're a doctor or a lawyer or, you know, whatever you are, you might want to consider what's your next alternative work. If, if there's no work available for you in your line of work, you know, mowing yards, I mean, how much are you going to get? I mean, how are you going to make the payments on your place? I did keep these things in mind when I got this place. That's why it was said that in 1991, 92, that, I wasn't going to pay more than $250 a month, and that included my property tax, including property tax. Um, I had gravity flow water. We got a, we got a spring at the other end of the water. I was able that I have water rights too, so I was able to have water until I got my well on in. I didn't have electricity here for for, for about five, six years, something like that, quite a while. It was. It was twelve thousand dollars to bring electricity into this place. I didn't know that when I bought the place. I didn't even think about that. I was kind of stupid on that type of stuff. Learned the hard way. Don't regret it for one bit. But we lived out here for a long time without electricity. Off the grid, we you know pulled a camp trailer. Well, first of all, the first summer we lived out in a tent. Then we parked a camp trailer on out here, and, and you know I put the septic system in. I developed the water, the, the underground, uh, well the the spring. I developed the, with the dug line on in. So we'd have gravity flow water coming on in, holding tank and all that. Um, learned how to live without electricity. But me as a contractor, it kind of sucked because a lot of my jobs that I would do, I'd need to do some of the projects here at home. And have to fire up a generator every time you want to run a power tool. It flat out sucks, especially when you're trying to think and you got that generator running in the background. It's annoying. So, so uh, I was eager to get power, to get on the grid. Um, now I could get by without the, getting off the grid for the home, but my shop, no, I'll never take my shape. Even if I take my house off the grid, my shop will always be on grid because you know what? If, you know, when I use that shop, it pulls a lot of electricity and I ain't going to do it with solar. I ain't even going to attempt to. Um, But those years, for, for, for all those years, we, we lived on out here with very little to nothing. Now, mind you, I was making good money during those years, but I also had a hell, hell of a lot of uh, doctor's bills on, on my, uh, well, my wife, when, when she went to labor and stuff, uh, she was in the, my, my wife was in the hospital for a couple months, and that, that was a bloody fortune that we didn't have insurance that I had to pay. Uh, my daughter, m my wife was in the hospital for two months. My my daughter was in the hospital for three months. That was those, those were some huge doctor bills. And then then afterwards, my daughter's had uh, right around twenty twenty five surgeries. You know, uh, ear surgeries. They took the bones out of her ears and and uh, to get rid of the bone disease and put them back. And they did this a couple of two or three times and stuff and. She was born with twisted legs and a spinal dimple that she had to have covered, so she wanted to get a spinal dimple. Dimple, uh, you know, there, there was a, you know, over over the years, a lot of medical bills there on on my daughter. So even though I was making good money, all the money that I was making go, was going out in medical bills, which cost me the cost of a nice house that I could have had here easily. And I'm not complaining one bit. You know, not one, I want to change a thing, not one one bit. I'm just telling you um, the way it was, it has been for us. Not a sob story, it's just what we did and how we got through it. And I was fortunate for a dad that, that taught me the construction and, uh, and taught me how to be a contractor, you know, to where I could make better money than just flat out carpenter wages. Um, we, we, we struggled a lot the years not having a big house with a you know my daughter being in a wheelchair at times and stuff because of her legs and you know not you know the place is not handicapped accessible per se 
Um, but we, we made do. We, we made things work. This, uh, we, we ended up putting, I bought a $500 mobile home that I brought up here, and I did some work on it, and I needed to do a whole bunch more work to it. But it's a t only a 10 by 40 and did an addition on the back of the, a little addition on the back of it. It's only, uh, our house is probably, it's less than 600 square foot, I'll put it that way. Um, it's pretty small. The, uh, the life that I've lived here, even when I was contracting, it's pretty tough when you're, when you're rubbing shoulders with, because I was building custom homes. So you're rubbing shoulders with the people that make a whole lot of money and it does get kind of tough you know uh, doing do it um, I mean people want to have barbecues and stuff and you're kind of ashamed to bring them up and show them your your, your rundown shack you know and stuff and let them know how you live and then, then they say well damn you're such a fine carpenter why do you live like this here and I don't want to tell them my story you know I mean it's you know, I, I don't want to put the no sob story on nobody, you know, and, and, uh, so it did make that part tough on the business, but I got through those years. In, in, uh, 1979, you know, when I was, I was first, I had been building, you know, I'd been working for my dad, uh, since 76, I think it was, I fell 30 feet and, and uh, crushed my L5. Um, went went back to work a year later and stuff, and, and stayed at it for all the years. But that's that's the injury that I had on my back. I mean, it was rolling truss, and and uh, it was raining on out. The wood was uh, a little bit mossy, slick, and I slid off, went, went over off the edge, and down I went. But uh, going going through that. It was just part of developing my life, uh, knowing that I had to keep myself in good physical shape, you know, to uh, to keep my back in shape, and that worked really great for years. I mean, physically young, able, and working hard, keep those muscles toned. Uh, and it, I, I did okay through a number of years on that. I mean, a lot of pain during those years, but but I was able to deal with it. Uh, when the crunch happened in the early 2000 or whatever, um, things slowed down for a short time. I didn't have any work for about two months, three months, and when I did go back to work, it was a lot harder for me to get back to work. After you know, after 911 happened, about a year after that, you know, um, it was harder. To, you know, the, the people had shut down for itself, and then the the crunch and. Uh, the crunch in uh, 2008 was it you know I had some downtime there and it was just about damn near impossible to build the back muscles back up so uh, I went to uh, Uncle Sam and I says hey you know what I want to uh, be trained in another field of work and I want to go to school and and do something they said you're too old we're not going to train you we're just going to put you on disability. And I thought, sweet, I get to go out and play. I get to be an, one of those entitlement people. I, I get to live off the government money. Now, keep in mind, I did pay into Social Security, self-employment tax for all those years. Um, but, like I said, I had a lot of medical bills for, for 20 years. That kept my income level, actually, at poverty level which means that I didn't pay all that much self-employment tax, which means that my self-employment, that I, you know, my Social Security disability is not very high. It's higher than if I was just on SSI, the welfare, that, that check. But it's not a whole lot higher. But I don't need any more than what I have. You know, I mean, I was able to buy this, you know, I set this place up where, where even though, I, you know, I lived on low income, you know, stuff, all those years, even though I had the high money, I, I set myself up to live off of low income. You know, I had one guy, I'm not going to say his name, but he, he was asking, you know, how do you do it? I make good money, you know, stuff, but, you know, I mean, what, what do I do? You know, I mean, 
hey it's a mindset I can't tell you I can't tell anybody what to do what's going to be right for you I'm just telling you what it what how it's worked for me you know I uh, I don't I don't care that the place is a mess right now oh yeah I, I'll get it cleaned up in time I'm still getting there but I'm not in a rush I don't have nobody to impress you know including YouTube you know I mean now everybody wants to be popular Every, everybody wants everybody to like to like them and stuff and I, I get that and, and and I do too I, you know I want I want people to like me in my channel but if you don't like me in my channel I don't really care you know it's, it's, <laughs> it's I, it doesn't matter to me it's, it's not important to me but some people say you know being liked and being accepted is more important um, to me if I don't get what other people think that I should get done today that's their problem it's not my problem I'm the one that's living this life and if I'm happy with it y'all should be happy with it too and I think most of you are all are happy with my life and I think you're like what I present to you but if you don't I don't care it doesn't matter you know uh, you can like you can subscribe you can dislike you can unsubscribe do whatever you want it's all good with me um, The thing is, find out what is living within your means. And then live below your means. Don't try to live within, you know, up to the line of your means. Do the best that you can to live to be, to be below your means. So you can afford it. Another thing I want to suggest that anybody that was looking to, to get into... Uh, I'm going to call it back to nature type of living. I'm not going to call it homesteading because I'm not a homesteader. I've said that a number of times. I, I'm not a homesteader. Homesteading is way too much work. You know, I mean, I mean, I, I know there's two different theories behind that. The, you know, what a homesteader is. Some people say that a homesteader is somebody that that is pretty much pretty much self-sustaining. But then there's another mindset that that uh, that uh, homesteading is just a mindset you know of, of, uh, of living out in the country basically and, and owning a place well whatever your interpretation of the homestead is that's fine with me I, I don't care but I'm, I'm not a homesteader I'm just a hillbilly I, ju I just love the mountains I love crawling around out here which I don't do much anymore I can't do that anymore um, I just knew that someday that I was going to get old and when I got old I knew that I would not be able to make income on a steady pace that I was going to have to be dependent on Social Security because I hadn't paid in a regular retirement plan and I wanted to make damn sure that I could live on low income for the rest of my life and be happy and that's where I'm at today folks I love my life I love it here I, I love what it presents I love the fishing opportunities that I have here I love the hunting opportunities that I have here plenty of camping opportunities but why would I go camping when hey I lived the American dream as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you know, in my younger years, I did a lot of travel. I like being here at home. I don't have nothing to escape from, except for from myself, maybe. But I can do that right here, right here in my own backyard. If y'all want to live, whether you want to call it a hillbilly lifestyle, a homesteader li lifestyle, a hobby farmer lifestyle, all I can tell you is figure out how you can do it and live below your means. It's going to take you some work. Nobody's going to hand it to you. Nobody's going to give it to you. Nobody gave me this place. I worked for 40 years. 
I worked for 12 to 14 hours a day for 40 years, six days a week. Bust my ass off. This was not given to me. I earned every bit of it. I haven't had nobody give me a damn thing. It's mine. This, this, this is what I earned. You know, um, when I bought this place, it was $30,000. And you know what? People told me I was paying too much. But I knew that property value would go up and I would get my money back if I ever chose to sell it. And you know what? They was I knew I was right, and I was right. I can sell this place for a whole lot more than what I paid for it. But I also had to buy something. You know, I mean, at the time I could have bought a house for in town, you know, for sixty, seventy thousand bucks. But I would have had twice the payments. Wouldn't have been happy. I would rather live out in the country in a tent than to live in town in a house. Now, if you're on a lower income, that might be the mindset that you have to have. If you don't have the money to do that and you want to live out in the country, you might have to start out in a tent like I did and try doing that with a wife and a daughter, a daughter with all sorts of health issues. I shouldn't say health issues. She was a healthy child, but a bunch of physical disabilities. Um, it, it was a job, but we got through it. I, I love where I'm at. I'm happy. I'm content. I love my wife. I love my daughter. I love my chickens. I even love my roosters so much that, hey, I have a hell of a time butchering them. <laughs> But, you know how I get through that? Is I just think of them as chicken. Chinese chicken. Hey, kitty, 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 kitty. Guess what I'm having for dinner tonight. Hey, y'all have a great weekend. Bye.